three. Uh, uh, this is uh, Chair Bennett. I would like to call to order the March 22, 2022 special meeting of the Hillsborough Planning Commission. Mr. Cooper, would you please call the roll? Anything else you want to say about Give him just one second. All right. Um, thank you. President Bennett. Here. Vice President Cavoya. Here. Commissioner Ayer. Here. Commissioner Grillo. Here. Commissioner Schiller. Here. Commissioner Thrall Nash. Here. And Commissioner Usmani, I just spoke to and will not um, be available tonight. We have a quorum present, so we will proceed with our albeit brief agenda tonight. Uh, the Planning Commission is placing emphasis on effectively addressing the issues in which we are engaged in a respectful and timely manner. We ask all parties to hearings uh, and administrative matters during our meetings to assist us with this emphasis by participating in a direct and relevant testimony and comments. Of course, there are uh, no opportunities for either public or participant testimony or comment commentary tonight given the limited nature of this hearing. Um, this is our continued hearing on appeal 001-22, the second and main commons project. The applicant is Travis Henry of Henry Point Development. The appellants are Marlis Carter, Dana Carter, Yvonne DeHart, Dirk Knudsen, and Jeff Nelson. The legal description of the property, which is the subject of the application are tax lots 6,800, 6,900, 7,000, 7,100, 7,200, and 7,300 on Washington County Assessor's Tax Map 1N2-31CC. The request is, uh, this is a continuance of the February 23, 2022 initial hearing on this application. The Planning Commission uh, meeting will only be for planning commission to review and consider additional testimony and evidence and responses that were previously submitted by participants to this proceeding. We will consider an appeal of the planning director's approval of a development review application in case file number DR-058-21 for the conversion of a previous bank into four spaces proposed for eating and drinking establishments located in the station community commercial downtown zone. Staff is requesting that the planning commission consider an order upholding the planning director's approval. Order number 8363 is available for consideration. Rachel Mar Marble is our staff member in this proceeding. I will now ask the city attorney, Chad Jacobs, to go over the legal instructions and in sequence for this, this evening's meeting. Mr. Jacobs, it's all yours. Thank you, Chair Bennett. Again, members of the commission for the record, Chad Jacobs from the city attorney's office. As just explained by Chair Bennett, this is a continuation of the hearing that began on February 23rd. As you may recall, on February 23rd, the appellants requested that the commission keep the record open, which was done to allow them and others, whoever wanted to, to submit new testimony into the record. Uh, which they did. Um, and then it also provided an opportunity for anyone to respond to that new testimony and then finally provided a, an opportunity for the appellant to have, uh, or for the applicant, I'm sorry, to have a final response. At this point in time, we've received all the testimony that you're going to receive related to this matter. So we're at the point in the public hearing process where you now have an opportunity for staff to sort of summarize everything and give a staff report and you an opportunity to ask questions of staff. After that point in time, we will have a motion for you to close the public hearing and then move towards your deliberation stage. At that point in time, we'll have a request a motion from you all as to what you wanna do with this matter, allow you to deliberate and then make a final decision. As you may recall, we are uh, having this special meeting tonight in order to comply with the 120 day rule requirement. So we are requesting that you reach a decision tonight so we can issue the final decision tomorrow. Uh, that's sort of how we're going to proceed this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. And if you don't have any questions, uh, we'll move into the stage of the hearing where you get the final staff report. 
Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Mr. Jacobs before we proceed to the staff report? I'm seeing none. So Ms. Marvel, would you please proceed with the staff report? Good evening, commissioners. For the record, it's Rachel Marble, planner with the Community Development Department. I um, am going to give a brief um, recap of the um, staff report. Um, and I'm not intending to cover the entirety of the staff report that I gave you at the last hearing, although I'm happy to answer any questions you have at the end to re-clarify information that I gave you at the previous hearing. So following, as Chad mentioned, following the hearing on February 23rd, the appellants requested that the record be held open and had seven days to submit additional testimony. That testimony was included to you in a staff report um, and no, um, I'll clarify a few points based on that additional testimony that was submitted. Um, however, uh, most of that testimony was re-highlighting and clarifying points that were originally made in the appellant's filing. Uh, following that seven days, the applicant and the Hillsborough Fire Chief both took the opportunity to respond to that testimony in the preceding seven days. And then following that period, um, the applicant waived their right to a final legal, legal argument uh, in writing, which I've also attached as they responded during the uh, preceding seven days. So I'd like to make a few clarifications about some of the additional testimony and responses that were submitted. Firstly, just wanna re-highlight that there is no code requirement in the downtown plan district for Southeast Fork Lane, which is considered a potential alley to be extended to Southeast 2nd Avenue, nor is there a requirement by the fire department to extend that alley for fire access. Um, the building, as stated by the fire chief in his response, met all of the current fire access requirements for the current proposed development during the review of the application. Secondly, I just want to re-highlight that the correct tax lots, including tax lots 6,800, 6,900, 7,000, 7,100, 7,200, and 7,300 have been referenced consistently and correctly in the public notice for the original development review, in the notice of the decision for the development review, and in any staff reports that have been published on both the uh, original appeal and then uh, on the appeal hearing and then on and tonight's um, staff report. And lastly, just to re-highlight that the two tax lots south of this development, which currently have an existing parking lot, are not a part of the current development review and any future phase of development on those two tax lots would be required to submit a separate development review application during which time it would be reviewed for all um, necessary um, code requirements, including fire access um, at that time for whatever is being proposed on those two tax lots. Uh, and it would be reviewed the same as any development uh, that is coming into the city. Um, that's all I have for you this evening and I'm happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you, Ms. Marble. Uh, do commissioners have any questions for Ms. Marble? I can't see everybody at one time, so I'm gonna scroll back and forth here. Um, I'm not seeing anyone raising their hands. So no questions for staff. Do I have a motion from the Planning Commission to close the public hearing? Well, I'll move that we close the public hearing. And do I have a second to that motion? Second. I have a motion from Commissioner Grillo to close the public hearing, seconded by Commissioner Cavulia. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Does anyone want to abstain? 
Looks like we have a unanimous motion to close the public hearing. Now's the time for the Planning Commission deliberations. Who would like to start out this evening? I'll go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Thrall Nash. <laughs> Get this party started. Um, so, in my brain, I'm taking each of these objections that the appellants have to this um, decision in turn. The first is the existing the the concern about whether or not this is an existing building or a new building new qual would qualify as a new building, and since the footprint of the building isn't going to change, nor is the location of anything attached to the building going to change, to me that clearly means it's an existing building. So that doesn't um, I'm not convinced by their arguments that this would need to be a new uh, considered a new building. Um, and I was really glad to see the fire chief um, write his letter and the new information that we had this week because it really helped clarify for me um, um, what the, the fire issues. And from what he has stated, um, I understand the appellant's concern for fire safety. Obviously, everybody's very aware of fire safety at this moment in downtown. Um, but not only does it not appear that it doesn't appear to me that there's an illegal way to claim that that the, the for the easement or not really easement but but um, condition that we would place that there would be a fire access lane but there it's not going to even if we decided to do that it doesn't appear that it would solve the problem because there's existing there's existing um, electrical lines that are in the way. It sounds like the for it sounds like the fire chief had said in his letter that there would they wouldn't be putting fire equipment right there anyway if there was an issue because they don't stage right there. So that letter really helped clarify for me. But there's really no solution to the fire issue um, via any route that the appellates have have requested. Um, and in terms of is it an alley, is it not an alley? My understanding of our role here is that we are meant to evaluate whether or not in the, the planning director applied the current code and the current code calls it a potential alley. And so I don't see any role for us in saying, no, it's not. And that you need, and it needs to be called an alley and hence other things need to be triggered. So those are my three thoughts about this process. So I would be inclined to uphold the planning director's um, decision. Thank you, Commissioner Thrall-Nash. Uh, who's next? I would have to agree. Um, while I understand the appellant's concerns, I think that just like um, Commissioner Thrall-Nash just stated, none of the, this development does not change or impact those concerns um, regardless of taking place. So I would also have to stand in favor of approving. Thank you, Commissioner Schiller. Yeah, I do agree with my fellow commissioners. Uh, on the merits, uh, I do not see any reason to uh, go against the uh, plan director's uh, uh, consent to move forward with the project. Uh, none of the issues that were raised change. Uh, uh, I mean, the definition of a new building versus an existing, it is an existing facility. And uh, issues raised about alleyway as well as a fire are not really, nothing changes with, uh, with the project. I don't think the project makes, makes it any worse than it is today. So. Uh, I'll be voting to move the project forward. Thank you, Commissioner Kabulia. Other commissioners? Commissioner Ayer, any uh, thoughts from, from your camp there? Uh, I was looking forward to the fire commissioner's uh, remarks as a guide to 
this applicant. And uh, it was very clear that um, it the the current the new the existing building's structure would not change anything um, legally for fire uh, access. And the existing versus new new building definitions uh, show that it's an existing building. And uh, so I'm inclined to uh, approve the project. Thank you, Commissioner Ayer. Commissioner Grillo, yes. I'm sure you have some thoughts on this. Well, I share uh, many of the thoughts that the other planning commissioners, uh, I was sitting back uh, yesterday thinking about this case and, uh, from both angles and I, what struck me is, is that what we have here is somebody who is uh, renovating a, an existing structure. Uh, I don't think that the appealing party has made the case that it's a that there's a, a new building or a new addition on the case. Um, I don't think the evidence in the record supports that. Um, but uh, what struck me is that there's nothing really out in the area other than the uh, uh, drive through being enclosed. And really the only change that's really occurring is that the uh, other parties in question won't be able to drive through the drive through which was stated at the previous meeting. And I, I don't find that that to be a sufficient argument um, uh, to, to uphold the appeal. Um, I think that raises a larger question, which I think is outside the jurisdiction of the Planning Commission as to who has access over whose property in this super block. And uh, my personal opinion is I think that that should be deferred to greater minds, certainly than myself um, on that issue. Uh, I also would agree with the Planning Commission that uh, uh, the uh, March 9th letter from the, the chief uh, was very helpful. Um, it's clear that he has indicated that the submittal met the minimum requirements for fire department access. So although there was a lot of conversation in the public hearing about what's fire access, who has fire access and whatever, um, at least from my standpoint, I found the fire chief's point very persuasive. Um, the other thing that uh, Commissioner Thrall Nash pointed to, which I thought was very interesting, was um, even if there wasn't an extension of uh, part of the uh, alley over to second, uh, that appears to be in no way, shape, or form, according to the fire chief's argument, that he would be driving any fire apparatus down that alley uh, in any way, shape, or form depending on the, the type of fire and not the least of which it was uh, a concern for safety of the firemen uh, for the overhead utility. So, um, which, which was something that we didn't have a lot of conversation about, but I think that's fairly persuasive, uh, quite frankly. Uh, and although we had, again, a lot of conversation about what constitutes fire access, fire safety, uh, I think the fire chief's letter uh, in the absence of any other evidence, I think is persuasive over the arguments that the appellants have. Um, I'm inclined to uphold the planning director's uh, decision. And, and I will make one sidebar. There seems to be a lot of other conversation and other topics coming into play in this appeal. Uh, all of which have nothing to do with what the Planning Commission uh, can deal with. Um, uh, I don't think we need to have a position on what the uh, uh, Redevelopment or Economic Development Council does or doesn't lend money to. Um, I don't think we're in a position to talk in depth about what the Hillsborough Way is. Uh, I don't. I think that's outside of the of the. Uh, the wheelhouse for the Planning Commission, Chair Bennett. And I think that uh, 
what I'm left with is there's a additional public information conversation that needs to be held outside of this appeal uh, with the balance of the uh, property owners, uh, leases, whatever you wish to call them in this super block um, that this planning commission is not the forum to have that, quite frankly. Um, but I think there's a need for that out there. But having said that, uh, clearly the staff, Ms. Marble and the fire chief have extended themselves multiple times. And I think we need to acknowledge that the city has reached out, has tried to explain uh, much of this, uh, what's going on. Uh, that's unfortunate that, and it kind of goes back to the theory that I've always had is that anytime you're trying to teach somebody something at a public hearing, that's not the right time. Uh, education in terminology, education in fire apparatus, education in what's a limited land use decision. Um, and lastly, I would say that um, at least from my perspective, um, I do not think it's appropriate for people to come to a public forum in a public hearing as this is and, and, and indicate as what I heard at the last planning commission that this mechanism is being used to leverage another property owner. I think that's inappropriate um, and it's not anything that I can do with uh, and I hope the rest of the planning commission would agree with me. But the bottom line for me is um, I'm inclined to uphold the planning director's decision. Chair Bennett, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Grill. Uh, very well thought out comments by everybody tonight. Um, it's clear to me at least that uh, the arguments that have been made by the appellants in this case have been listened to by all planning commission members and carefully thought about. Um, I guess I want to say a couple of prefatory, make a couple of prefatory comments um, before I kind of go through my analysis of the issues. The first is that um, I'm very sensitive to the safety and fire issues that the appellants have raised. Um, you know, we've had a recent fire in downtown Hillsboro, and, and that just heightens the um, the issue uh, about about how do we fight fires in downtown Hillsboro and, and how do we keep people who are in those buildings safe and how do we keep our firefighters safe and, and how do we do the best we can to preserve uh, a downtown that's well over a hundred years in the making. Um, so the concerns that have been raised certainly have, I don't think, fallen on deaf ears with this commission. I think you know, they're serious concerns. Having said that, the sandbox inside which we play is limited by what the code says. And um, we can only look to the code to uh, size up this application and size up the the, the appeal. And uh, what happens outside the code is not within our jurisdiction. Um, some concerns, concerns have been raised that the, there are mistakes in the code based upon historical documents. And um, the time for addressing those mistakes is not in these quasi-judicial proceedings. Uh, the time for dealing with those kinds of arguments is in a legislative context, um, and we're not in that context here. We, as a planning commission, have to take the code as it's given to us, and we have an obligation to implement it whether we agree with it or not. Um, so, so having said that, kind of going uh, the couple of easy, easy issues, I think, the tax lot descriptions, it's very clear both in the director's decision and the staff reports that the description of the tax lots, which are the subject of the application is correct. So um, 
and there's been no evidence provided that um, that anyone was truly confused um, by the fact that the original application included a couple of uh, other tax lot numbers. Um, so to the extent that there was any prejudice there, I, I think the ability for people to uh, see what the notice of decision said in terms of how the, the property was described and have an opportunity to participate in this proceeding and voice their views, um, correct whatever minor, minor technical error may have, um, may exist with regard to the tax law. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, with regard to the issue of the existing versus new building, I think our code is quite clear that this is, this is a modification of an existing building. Um, I could see a scenario uh, that isn't present here where if someone were trying to uh, you know, leave six feet of a wall of an old building up in order to avoid streetscape standards that are in the, in the, in the new code, um, I could see that kind of argument being made that that's not an existing building, but that's not what we're, we're dealing with here. Um, we have an applicant that's taking an existing building, working with the footprint of that existing building and making modifications to that building to, to uh, implement an, an adaptive reuse that quite frankly is consistent with what the station community uh, code um, is looking to accomplish in downtown Hillsboro. Um, I think the big question is the alley question and, and the staff is, has analyzed CDC section 12.61.300B and, uh, and I agree with the way the staff has sized that up. Um, they're basically saying that this project isn't adjacent to an existing alley. And that's the very you know, specific language in our, in our code. Um, the code does indicate that uh, Fork Lane is a potential alley, but that's, it's, the code says adjacent to any existing or vacated alley. And so it's not adjacent to an existing alley. Uh, per the language of our code. And um, I think all of the other arguments relating to the size of the alley, the width of the alley, whether the alley is, is safe for, for firefighting vehicles, um, they're a bit on the, you know, in the category of red herrings. They're just, they're, um, there are concerns that have been raised that are policy concerns. They're not concerns that are in front of us based on the language of our code. Um, I, like Commissioner Grillo and Commissioner Thrall Nash, am uh, persuaded by the letter that the city has received from um, Fire Chief Downey that talks about uh, Fork Lane and and I mean, he's, the letter says, quote, it would be inconsistent with firefighting tactics to drive a fire apparatus down a 20 foot dead end alley directly adjacent to the buildings constructed at right of way and on which overhead utilities further limit the use of the alley for fire access. Um, what I read that to say is that even if that alley were extended through there, um, it wouldn't be used because it wouldn't be an appropriate um, means of fighting fire in those buildings. I unfortunately for, for the applicants don't feel that our code um, requires this applicant to provide an avenue of safety for the appellants that isn't provided um, in our regulations. Uh, while it would be awesome if there were a great big wide way for a fire truck to get back in there to fight a fire, um, that's not what our code requires. And um, so uh, uh, while I'm sympathetic to the risks that, are, uh, that those property owners have to deal with, um, 
like I said earlier, we're confined by what our code requires, not what we maybe would require in our heart. Um, so uh, I think with that, it's pretty obvious, obvious uh, that I am supportive of the decision that the planning director made here. Um, I'm not supportive of, of upholding the appeal and uh, that's the way I would look at this. So uh, does do any of the other commissioners have comments before I entertain a motion on the appeal? I'm seeing none. Uh, so having said that, uh, do we have a final motion on appeal 001-22, second in Maine Commons, to reverse or affirm the planning director's decision on case file number DR-028-21? So moved. I have a first by Commissioner Ayer. Is there a second? One second. I have a second by Commissioner Schiller. Uh, just to clarify, the motion is to is to is the motion to affirm the planning director's decision. I just want Commissioner Air. I want just want to make clear that that's what your motion is. Yes, okay. it is to uphold the planning director's decision. Okay, and um, is it also intended to be based on the staff report and the supplemental staff reports that we have received together with the arguments that have been made by um, the attorney for the applicant uh, in support of that motion? Yes. Okay. So having heard a motion and a second to affirm the planning director's decision on case file, number DR-028-21. Uh, based on the staff, the staff reports on file and based upon the legal argument made by the uh, attorney for the appellant, Mr. Cooper, will you please uh, roll call this motion? Yes, um, one moment, President Bennett. <clears throat> President Bennett. Aye. Vice President Kibulia. Aye. Commissioner Ayer. Aye. Commissioner Grillo. Aye. Commissioner Schiller. Aye. Commissioner Thrall Nash. Aye. Commissioner Usmani is absent. The vote is 6 0 to affirm the planning director's decision on case file number DR 028 21 and to deny the appeal in case file number in appeal 001-22. That's it for that, that matter. Um, I have only sure. one other matter. Excuse me, Jim, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes. but before you move off of this matter, uh, can I just confirm with staff that they don't need um, approval of in the motion for a, a revised condition of approval number four um, that was in the draft order from February 23rd? because that was not included in the motion that was just approved. So Chris or Rachel, do you wanna provide? I, I certainly think we could redo the motion to ensure if that's required, Rachel. Um, yes, it, the motion should include a revised condition of approval as uh, requested in the staff report. So, so I apologize, I didn't catch this earlier. Um, if you recall in your uh, packet from February 23rd, there was a draft order that staff had put together. And in that draft order, there was a revised condition of approval number four, um, which basically stated 
um, that prior to submittal for building permits, the applicant shall submit a lot consolidation application to the planning division for tax lots 1N231CC06800, 6900, 7000, 7100, 7200, compliance to be verified by the planning division. So if the commission is so inclined, I would ask that you um, just approve a new motion affirming the planning commissioner's decision with the revised condition approval number four as stated in the draft order. Mr. Jacobs, can I just ask for uh, an amended order to include the modification condition of yep. approval number four? That would be fine. Okay. So what I would do is entertain a motion to modify the order we just approved, um, which is order 8363 by modifying condition of approval number four as indicated in the staff report. Do I have a motion to that effect? And President Bennett, just to, if I may interrupt uh, with a point of order, for the audience, I want to um, make it clear that there is no um, public testimony or public comment this evening. This meeting was um, strictly for deliberation. We've got some people that are raising their hands, so I just wanted to make that clear as we're making this final motion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. So I would entertain a motion to modify our approved motion to include a a modification to conditional condition of approval number four as indicated in the staff report. So moved. Do I have, I have a motion from Commissioner? Do I have a second? I will second it. I have a motion from Commissioner Ayer, seconded by Commissioner Schiller to modify the the previous motion to modify condition of approval number four as indicated in the staff report. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone who's opposed, please say nay. Does anyone abstain? The motion carries. All right. So I think that disposes of the appeal. I have only one item. It's a just, it's not even a housekeeping item. It's an informational item. Um, all commissioners should have received uh, via email this week from the uh, Oregon Government Ethics Commission, a request that you file an annual statement of economic interest. It's um, very easy to do. I filled mine out in less than five minutes. Um, but it's required uh, by the state when you're a member of a public um, uh, commission like the Planning Commission. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Is there anyone who hasn't received that email from the Government Ethics Commission? It's looking like everybody received it. Okay, just wanted to make sure that you uh, pay attention to that. The deadline for Filing that statement is April 15th. Um, does anyone else have anything for the good of the order? Nope. Hearing none, um, we'll adjourn this planning commission, special meeting of the planning commission at 6.41 p.m. We'll see everyone tomorrow night for our regular meeting. Have a good night, a good day tomorrow. Thanks for all, uh, everyone participating. Appreciate the time. <laughs>